Hey everyone, how you doing? Let's have a look at the changes that have happened to Desin over the last few months to turn it into 1.0, and then it's Figma and Webflow versions. And okay, if you saw my sketch for Teams video, you'll see that I split this library into two, one with just the fundamentals, and then I moved the components over to another. And if we look at where we were in the last episode of the series, before I did that, this is what we see. We've got brand and colors and layer styles, typography for pretty much everything, buttons, form fields, iconography, images, tabs and tables, accordion, breadcrumbs and pagination, desktop and mobile headers, footers and a hero banner along with some responsive cards. And if we pull back, it's quite a lot happening in one place, right? So let's go and have a look at the fundamentals library. And already we can see that everything's been cleaned up, restructured, there's more of some things and less of others. Let's go and look at the components library and where did the headers, footers, responsive cards and banner go? Now, what I've learned over the last year or so working with design systems in large organizations and now in a kind of smaller startup is that less is more. It really is. If you can get the fundamentals right and cut down on the amount of symbols that you pack into your design system, the less complex it is and the more flexibility you have. And sure, that doesn't stop you from creating the components that you need, but you really just start with a baseline and then you build upon it. Let's go back to the fundamentals and see what's changed. Okay, the logo is the same, but the colors have been renamed. So now we've got the American type of spelling, which is CSS centric, has color, forward slash, whatever the color group it is, forward slash, whatever the tint it is. So if we start at R100, that's red 100%. Red 110 is a darker shade. And then all of these right down to red 10 or R10 are tints of that 100%. And this basically just frees up color to be scalable and to be used anywhere for anything. The amount of layer styles for lines has been reduced a little bit. The surfaces are there right up until level eight. There's an overlay, a couple of dividers and new spacer symbols. And they're pretty good for developers as well as a visual guideline for the margins and padding of your design. Moving over to typography, the uh, desktop and mobile has been moved on to one artboard. The H1 display has been changed to title one. And then there's red and blue versions of headings as well for a bit of flexibility. Over on the typography body artboard, paragraph styles have been changed to body. So it covers every style that you'll need. We go down to links. Those have been cleaned up. And labels and lists have had a bit of a cleanup as well. And if we zoom out, you can see that there's no mobile textiles. I've removed them to make this more of a web-based version and then uh, we'll update it again, reintroduce them, probably put them into their own app fundamentals library and then we'll start working on some app components. Okay, icons have been cleaned up as well. There's no pictograms. I don't know if you're ever gonna use the ones that I created. So let's go back to basics and images haven't changed either. So that's fundamentals. Let's go have a look at what's changed in components. Okay, not much has changed in buttons and forms, but you can see over here that R100 is now the button's background. And if I drop that down, this is how the color scale becomes available in Sketch 61. Tabs and tables haven't changed much either. Neither has accordion or breadcrumbs. The only thing that's happened here is assigning the correct text style. And that's it for components. But before I tell you how you can get access to them, now we've moved away from abstract to sketch for teams, let's go and have a look at the new artboard that's in the fundamentals. Let's turn on our grid, zoom in. You can see just like the others, the columns are fitting perfectly into an eight point grid, which is gonna allow us to design faster in the same way that you've learned for the rest of the series. Okay, let's jump over to how you can get those libraries. I'm going to add the library links to the description of this video. The first one is for the fundamentals. If you enter this into your browser, 
you hopefully will see this. And then over on the right, you can select download document or add library to sketch. Now I'd suggest you do this because you're probably going to want to download Desin, change the colors to what you want to use, the type to what you want to use. So you can start using it for your own projects or for your own company. If you go ahead and add library to sketch, any change I make, you will get as well and it'll affect everything you're doing. So don't click this, probably click that. Same goes for the components. Just go to download document. And once you've added them to Sketch as libraries, you'll be able to use them like you use any other library. Fantastic. Let's move on to Figma. Hmm. This was an interesting one. A little while ago, I did a poll on what you would want Desin to be part of next. It was between Adobe XD and Figma and Figma won by landslide. So Figma is a bit of a different beast. But let's get into it and see how Desin works inside Figma. If you add the Figma link into your browser, you should see this. If you've already got an account, you'll see it pop up and you'll be able to go duplicate to drafts. But this is from the point of view of somebody who doesn't have a Figma account. So what are we going to do here? I think I'm going to sign up with email. I'm going to put in info at desin.io. Select a password. Create account. And what kind of work do I do? I am design. And I agree to join your mailing list. Why not? We're a pretty good company. Let's just get into it. Okay, and I'm in. Sweet. See how it says view only up here? Let's drop that down. Go duplicate to your drafts. Go to the bottom and select open. Welcome Christopher. All right. Let's have a look around. Ooh, constraints. Nice. Pen tool. Comments. Sharing. Yay. Multiplayer. Coming to sketch in 2020. This brings up a good point about the Figma version. I've had to combine fundamentals and components back into the single library because otherwise I would have to pay for it. And I want to make Desin free for you and as free as possible for me as well to create. And creating a team library means that I have to start paying for Figma, something that I hardly ever use. I will be doing tutorials on it because why not, right? I want to be able to give you the content that you need, but I want it to be free for you and me. Okay, and on that note, we can look at the local styles here. You can see the color coming through. They're all named the same thing they are in Sketch. R100, Neutral 100 ETC. You've got Surface and Grid Styles as well. If we go over to Artboards and Grid. Select one and move in. Go over to the menu. Go to View and then Layout Grids, you'll see that they have been translated over from Sketch nicely. All right, let's go to Components. Now, everything is here in one place. And it all looks very familiar. Now, the import into Figma and then translation into the way that Figma handles everything took quite a bit of work, but we're here using the same things, right? So we've got color red, 110, let's go to color red 100 actually, select it. We go over to here and select color red 100. We can see the color scale where we can just change things or not change them if we want to. Everything's pretty similar except for typography. So the way that Figma handles typography, and this is something that a lot of people have been asking for in Sketch as well, is that they decouple color and alignment from the textile yeah, just like CSS, right? So it kind of makes sense. We go in, we've got heading one that has a style of H1, right? So there it is there. Now, if I duplicate that and change its color and alignment, 
This doesn't need to change or get updated. Those variables are baked into the changes I've just made for that element. So that means in Figma, you don't need all the left, center, right, or color versions of all those text styles. So there's not much here, right? You've just got title one, H1 down to H4, body, links, and then the mobile headings as well. Let's zoom out. The icons have translated over nicely. Okay, and even in Figma, I'm still providing the three different versions. So you can swap them out in the overrides panel. This locks your icon usage down so you don't end up with Frankenstein icons where somebody just placed an icon that's black, overridden it to red, and now it's not linked back to a single source of truth. You don't have to do that. That's just the way that I do it. Okay. The images are there as well. And this is very familiar. Buttons, tabs and tables, an accordion, breadcrumbs and pagination. All right. And from there, if we go to the assets tab, which is the equivalent of the components tab inside sketch, drop things down, we can see thumbnail previews of everything, which is really good. Let's find something like a button. All right, that doesn't really show us much, but if you type up here, then you get all the buttons that are available to you. If I was to drag one, just over there, zoom into it. Then I can grab that symbol, double click on it to change its label. Hello. Uh, the background, I can override, but again, I don't advise doing that because as soon as I do this, it's now something that doesn't tie back to a single source. Okay, let's delete that. Hit type. Hi, my name is Chris. Select it, go over to here and select a different style. I'm gonna go for body, left aligned, and change its color to red, and its alignment to right. Okay, let's zoom out, take a look at everything. Okay, that's the basic walkthrough of Desin inside Figma. Like I said, I'll be doing some Figma tutorials that use Desin, so look out for those in the future. But for now, let's move into Webflow. Okay, the Webflow link will bring you to my profile page for the Desin design system inside Webflow. There's a clone button up here that will be hidden pretty soon. What it actually looks like is this. So we've got the fundamentals, the colors have come through, surfaces, type scale, iconography, just the basics there, images, components that actually work, form fields that actually work, video embeds, one of my old show reels and some tabs. And as I make updates to the sketch version, those will flow through the Figma and Webflow versions as well. So let's go back here, select clone, continue with email. I'm going to do that. I'm going to enter hello at desin.io. I already have an account at info at desin.io just so I can test things out. I'm going to select continue. No, I did not. So there you go. And welcome to Webflow, create a new password. Continue. Okay, and Webflow needs you to verify your email before you can hit the clone button and actually clone this project. So I'm gonna go and do that and then come back. And with that done, I'm gonna select clone. All right, create project. Okay, and here we are. I'm gonna go to the top left, go to dashboard. And you can see Desin as one of the projects there. You can duplicate this if you like, if you want to keep a clean version of Desin. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, let's go back to projects. I'm going to just work inside this copy of Desin. And this is a good idea because that'll be untouched, right? And you can come and reclone that anytime you like. But we're going to jump into here 
and take a look around. Okay, back at the builder, scroll down. I'm gonna select red 100 and you can see the block element modifier naming convention, right? So is double dash color single dash R100 is the class name that you can see over here. I'll be digging deeper into Webflow with you and how you can use it to build a website from Desin using all these classes. But again, this is just a quick run through of Desin inside Webflow. Okay, we're gonna go over to the left here and select Navigator. Just gonna expand it out. This is where you can see all of the elements. It's responsive, so you can set things to flow differently on different breakpoints and then preview it as well. And this is pretty much what we saw before. Okay, I'm just gonna jump back out of preview. All right, now if we go over to pages and create a new page, we could call this home. Gives you a preview of what it's gonna look like with your SEO. You can fill all this in if you like. But if I just select create, I have a blank page, right? Of course I do. I'm gonna go over and add a section. Then inside that section, I'm gonna add a container. And I'm gonna go over to the class here and there's DS content there. I could probably use that, but you might wanna use different classes in the design of your page then that page that governs the whole design system. So I'm gonna add one, container. You can select it, give it a top margin if you like. Make that 16, I'm gonna make the padding inside at 16 just to show you what happens there. Right. Then I'm gonna go and grab a heading. It's so gonna add element. Drag in a heading. I'm going to choose H2, H3. Now all of those styles are coming from the design system. So if I go and change something there, I think that page is actually called home as well. I'll change that just after this video. And I go down to heading. Select H1. Select all H1 headings. Go down and change that to light. See what it did there? It changed all of them because this has a class is align center that aligns it to center. And this has a class T1 that just overrides the H1 class. I'll go back to that page. It's done there as well. Pretty cool. Let's add some paragraph text. And I'm gonna add a button. Drag that underneath the paragraph. Now, if I select the button class, it's gonna to change to our default button. And you can see it working there. And all of those things are responsive. So you might wanna put in your section or your container, padding on the inside as well. I'll just put that on the other side. So when you go into responsive mode, the text and the other elements don't hit the side. Let's go back to the design system. Okay, and if I wanted to publish those changes, I just go up here, publish to selected domains. After that's done, you can select this icon here to go and have a look at what's happened. And there you go, the H1 has changed there and down there. So you can see how you can change all of those fundamental elements inside Webflow to match your type scale and color, just like you do in Figma and Sketch. And that's basically it for this video, right? So we've seen the updates to Sketch to bring it into the Desm 1.0. 1.01 will be a minor update. 1.1 will be a major update. Hope you've enjoyed this. Get in there, use it in Sketch, Figma and Webflow, however you like, have fun and I'll see you next time. Bye.